They say things that come from Poland are bigger and better. And they're right. Today, I'm making bigos, which is Polish hunter's stew. Traditionally, it's made with game animals, rabbit, squirrel, pheasant, duck, quail, wolverine. You name it, it can go in there. But today, we're just making it with beef, pork, kibasi, uh, mushrooms, sauerkraut. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. It's layers upon layers of flavors. We're going to make it. It takes time. It takes effort. But every minute and every ounce of effort is absolutely worth it. Let's get it done. So we're going to start off in a medium bowl. We're going to add three ounces of dried wild mushrooms. You can also use any kind of dried mushrooms. And to that, we're going to add four cups or one quart of hot, like boiling hot, beef broth. You can also use chicken broth or vegetable broth. As uh, Chef John would say, you are the David Lee Roth of choosing your broth. We're gonna let that steep, and while that's steeping, we're gonna get on our veggies. One medium head of nice cabbage. We're gonna cut that into quarters, and then we're gonna take the stem out and slice it very thinly. Uh, think coleslaw uh, thin, like, like coleslaw. So do them one at a time. Be careful you don't cut your fingers off. Uh, yeah, it looks like that's the stem. We'll pop that out. By the way, the top of that stem that you pull out, the core, the top of that core, is super sweet, super delicious. Eat it raw. It's like a little treat while you're working. So thinly slice it. Do all four of them. I'm only going to do this one for example's sake and spare you the rest of me chopping. There we go. Got a bowl of nice thinly shredded cabbage. Put that off to the side. Two medium onions. We're going to give them a, a little bit of a dice. Doesn't have to be too small, too perfect, or too uniform. We're gonna saute these down anyway. So again, rough chop, both of them. Get it nice, get them in a bowl, get it off to the side. In that bowl, I'm just gonna throw in one pound of fresh portobello mushrooms. So yes, a lot of mushrooms go in this. We need that earthy flavor. Prunes, they're not just to help your grandma poop. They're delicious too. So we're gonna dice these up. These are gonna give us a little bit of sweetness and uh, add a little bit of that uh, fruit, fruity kind of flavor, which is good. Three medium carrots. We're going to slice those up. They don't have to be too perfect. They're going to add some flavor and sweetness. Now, two pound uh, jar of good quality Polish sauerkraut. If there's vinegar in the sauerkraut, it's no good. Don't use it. Just use the one that's got salt, maybe a little sugar, and water. We're going to dump it into a colander in the sink. We're going to rinse it off. We want to get that excess salt off. After we've given it a little bit of a rinse, we're going to squeeze off the excess water. You know, really, really squeeze into it. Don't be, don't be scared to break it. Just you want, you want to get all the moisture out. This is going to have a lot of water in it. We don't want to have too much water in it. There we go. We got that squeezed off. It's in a bowl. It's off to the side. One pound of cubed beef chuck. Uh, my store happened to have it already chopped up into bite-sized pieces so I just put it in a bowl one pound of pork shoulder boneless and we're gonna cut it down into uh, bite-sized pieces kind of to match the beef uh, I put these both into the same bowl once they were cut that's fine you don't have to worry about cross-contamination because it's all getting cooked so we'll cut them into bite-sized chunks again I'm gonna spare you uh, watching me cut all of this meat so I'll give you the example and uh, we'll move on Look at that. That's delicious pork. It's all flavor. Pork is one of my favorite vegetables, just so you know. So now you know something about me. There we go. There's our meat. We got beef on the left, pork on the right. We'll put that out to the side while we move on. One pound of bacon, hickory smoked bacon. We're going to cut it into, uh, I guess, half-inch pieces. If you stick it in the freezer for a little bit, it'll harden up and uh, be easier to cut and then it'll come apart in the frying pan. It's amazing how it works. So we'll just get that chopped. Don't chop your fingers off. Chop it and get it off to the side. One pound of high quality smoked kibasi. Now, if you don't have a European market, a Polish market near you, um, do not use Hillshire Farms. There are places to get this. 
And a little hint, if you live in an area that has Boar's Head products, now this is a non-paid for plug, but I gotta throw it in there anyway. If you live in a place that has Boar's Head products, Boar's Head makes a kibasi that is as good, okay, almost as good as what you get in the Polish market. So we'll chop this up and then we'll move on to our uh, cooking phase. In the skillet, we're gonna add a little bit of oil just to give a little bit of lubrication on the bottom. I like to use canola oil. Then we're gonna add our bacon and get it a frying. You can fry this all the way crispy. That is absolutely fine. It's gonna be sitting in with the rest of the vegetables and cooking slowly so it will rehydrate and soften back up. Once it's nice and foamy, you're good to go. Then we're gonna put this out onto a bowl with some paper towel just to let it drain off. Do not lose that grease. You want that grease because we're gonna use it. There is so much flavor in there and we kind of need all that lubrication. Plus there's a delicious fond now on the bottom of that pan and we're gonna need that too. Everything's about flavor. This, this is like an, an umami bomb. So in the skillet, we're gonna throw our pork in first and we're gonna cook it until we see no more, uh, no more raw. We're gonna, we wanna brown it. I probably could have had this a little hotter to be honest with you. And, and, and I overcrowded it, so it ended up more boiling than uh, frying, but you get what we're going after. It actually didn't matter because the pork was phenomenal. So we'll get that. Once that you see no more raw on the outside, you got a little bit of a sear on there. We're going to transfer that into uh, a bowl, heat-proof bowl. I actually started, I was going to plan, I was planning on making this in my slow cooker and quickly realized it wasn't gonna fit, so I ended up just doing it all on the stove top, which is absolutely fine. If you could fit it all in your slow cooker, you can scale this recipe back. Uh, you can do it in the slow cooker, absolutely fine. You can do it on the stove. You can actually even do it in the oven if you have a pan that can handle that. So pork's done, heat the pan back up. Now we put the beef in, and we're gonna let that sear as well. Just give it a toss, keep tossing it, and again, once there are no more raw spots, it's time to uh, move on to the next step. We'll put that in the bowl as well. Let it all chill together because it's all going to stew together. This is the, the, the official national dish of Poland, by the way, and I'm, I hope that I'm keeping it as uh, traditional as possible. Now, all that cabbage that we sliced up, we're going to need to saute that a little bit, get it soft, get some of the water out of it because cabbage has a tremendous amount of water. So in batches, put it in your pan, let it cook down, keep tossing it. You wanna go over like a medium to medium high heat. Let it wither down. See, now, now it's reduced in volume. We're good to go. We're gonna put that in the bowl with the meat and continue on with all of the cabbage. You wanna do this to all the cabbage. So get that over. Now, as I'm frying up the rest of my cabbage, I'm just starting to put everything into the bowl. I didn't realize that I was running out of space just yet. I think this is like when I realized, but you can put everything else in, put your kibasi in, uh, your bacon. We still have to address the uh, uh, onions and mushrooms. The sauerkraut can go in. And it's just gonna sit there and chill. Get your prunes in there. Those are good for you. They're really good for you. I really like prunes. Get your carrots in. Now again, like I said, I realized this wasn't gonna fit into the slow cooker, so I'm just putting everything into the into the bowl just so it, I have room to work. It was convenient. I probably could have put it right into the pot. Now, our onions, our mushrooms. There's also uh, four cloves of garlic chopped up in there. I, I forgot to film that, but it's in there and it it's delicious. So we're gonna let that cook down once it starts getting a little brownness to it. Some people like to deglaze their pan with wine, but I don't like wine. Well, I mean, I like wine, just not that much. I like beer more, so I'm deglazing with beer. I'm using a nice lager. Get it in there, we're gonna let it boil, and then we're gonna, we're gonna let this reduce down till the liquid is almost gone. There we go. That's what you want. When you pull it away, the liquid kinda leaves some bare pan. Now I'm gonna throw that on top because that's where it needs to go. I changed to a very large uh, pot. Start dumping everything in. And get it all in. Even the stuff that flies off, you can still pick that up. If it was on your clean counter, just throw it back in the pot. 
Now one 12 ounce can of diced tomatoes with the juice, just throw the whole thing in, and one eight ounce can of tomato paste. Get, the, get all that in there. That's gonna bring some acidity in. The sauerkraut's gonna bring some acidity in. This is almost like a, a sweet and sour uh, kind of flavor is the best way to describe it. Now our mushrooms, onions, and garlic are done. We're gonna throw that in. Get it all in. Now the dried mushrooms that we had steeping, I'm gonna kind of take them out, squeeze off some of the excess, and then we're just gonna run our knife through them just to get them into some smaller pieces. Uh, that beef broth or whatever broth you used, that's gonna get poured in. I think I forgot to record that, but that that's a ton, a ton of flavor. So you don't wanna lose that. We'll run our knife through the mushrooms, break them down a little bit smaller. There were some porcini mushrooms in there, which are a little on the bigger side, so we want to want to get them a little smaller so they're manageable. That's it, just a quick chop, nothing fancy. Looking good. Good job, Raj. High five. Psh. All right, now we get those in, got everything mixed. Now we're going to give it a thorough, thorough mixing with that broth. The broth is already in there. You can see it on the bottom. Uh, you want to give it a nice mix, and then it's going to go on the stove, and it's going to cook. But before we do that, one last thing is three, I guess, medium-sized apples. I'm using uh, some Fuji apples because that's what I happen to have on hand. Uh, you can use almost any kind, but you're going to dice these up, peel them, dice them. This, is, again, is going to bring some sweetness. It's going to balance out that sauerkraut. It's going to balance out the, uh, the the tomato, and it's going to bring some amazing flavor. Apples and pork, apples and sauerkraut, it's a delicious combination. So get them in there, and we're going to get this cooking after you mix it. Don't forget to mix it. It looks so good. It smells so good already, but it's going to be amazing. Smokiness. Oh, I'm salivating. So we cover it. All right, so the bad news is this is gonna take quite a long time to cook. The good news is your house is gonna smell fantastic the whole time it's cooking, and the weight is absolutely worth it. I guarantee you that. So what you're gonna do is stir it every uh, hour or so. You wanna keep an eye on it. After the first like two hours, start checking it every hour for seasoning. If it needs more salt, needs more pepper, needs something, that's the time to adjust. Don't over season it right away because the, it takes time for everything to meld and you don't want to over salt it. You can always under salt it and add a little bit more, but if you add too much, you can't take it back out. So you don't want to do that. So take your time and yeah, just, just, just do it. And we'll be back when it's done. So here we are, eight and a half hours later. Everything's cooked. It's soft, it's tender, it's juicy, it's smoky, it's sour, it's sweet, it's just amazing. So we're gonna plate it up in our absolutely festive uh, winter bowl set because I liked it better than the flowery one. Why not? So get yourself a nice bowl, don't be shy. It's some delicious stuff. You're gonna eat plenty of it. And what's nice is it's a huge batch and it'll last you a couple days and trust me, you'll want it. Throw a little rye bread with it because rye bread is amazing. Decorate it with grass clippings. Now you're good to go. Stuff that in your face. Uh, it's probably as much of everything on a spoon as I can get. That looks so good. I'm dropping stuff. Um. Mm. Mm. Ridiculous. So there you have it. The Polish national dish of Bigos. It's delicious. Try making this for yourself. Again, it's worth the time and it's so perfect for one of those chilly fall days or even a really cold winter day. That's why it exists. So make it for yourself. If you really like this video, give me a thumbs up. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you want to tell me I suck, you can drop that in the comments too. Um, yeah, that's it. I really appreciate you watching and we'll catch you on the next one.